So, um, well, I just wanted to say that, um, well, this morning we saw the the, the uh, the, the evolution of the of of the commission programs, the the, the transformation of the uh, European uh, Europe for Citizens program into something uh, much wider, uh, which is the Surf program. Of course, that means like packaging uh, together many topics, all of them very relevant to society, but also to, to some people maybe the risk of seeing that dilute the the, the remembrance aspect diluted in a, in a in a wider framework. I think we were all reassured that that will not be the case. That the European Commission is very vigilant about this, and they uh, they also uh, assure that that attention will be continue to be paid to to those issues. Then uh, to connect with the second. Um, uh, panel, which was devoted to commemorations, I can say that uh, some of us, and certainly this this event of taking stock uh, of European memory policies, we took inspiration or, or or encouragement from the priorities of the European Commission uh, themselves in introducing a few years ago. Uh, commemorations as part of their priorities. So I think so I think this is a good example of how the you know this this like steering role of the European Commission also works in in stakeholders and and partners and organizations because you know when when there's a lock and open invitation to go in one direction well people normally follow you know so in our case we did we took that encouragement to 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 strengthen ties with the Spinelli Institute of course, with her own, but that was already the case. And, and to uh, try to streamline, if I can say that those, the, the commemorations or, or the commemorations that we have been discussing, the Schumann Declaration a year ago, but this year also the Ventotene Manifesto, the Treaty of Paris, and next year again, the setting in motion of the first, uh, the first European community in, in September of, of uh, 1952. So, Modestly, from our end, we we continue to try to streamline those commemorations that normally maybe would be outside this or, or a, a few years ago until a few years ago would would have been a, a outside the scope of of memory initiatives, and we do our part of the work in in in, in establishing connections with the memory and the trauma of war, of course, but also of the the, the solidarity bonds that were that that resulted from that experience of war and that uh, were put to good use to to overcome the situation and make sure that this situation was not repeated in in the future um with uh, regards to to uh, Marcus uh, presentation and also the observer presentation and again like bringing in some of the reflections that we discussed in strasbourg in the conference or aurora mentioned the first uh, conference a week ago on the observatory uh, there is also the the issue of the connection between those reports that aurora mentioned on that analysis and decision makers i think that was one of the key questions that Aurora also um underlined at the end of our discussions in Strasbourg, and I think it, it is still very relevant uh, today. That's why uh, maybe I would like to just at the same time answer to them and, and end my, let's say, like conclusions, invitation to, to keep talking uh, with, with two very specific uh, and announcements or proposals or or again invitations i use the word invitation a, a lot i realize right now but that's that's for a reason uh one is uh with the the istituto di studi federalisti Altero spinelli and with Arom, we have the idea of uh at the at the first occasion to make this series of events evolve into something a little bit different and to uh, bring in students and to uh, expand, let's say, the annual um, rendezvous appointment with uh, maybe throughout a week or half a week so that uh, this can become really a forum for discussion with also with students at the university level researchers, etc. So we would like to 
again, uh, do something in favor of this connection between analysts, decision makers, uh, responsibles of institutional programs. And then uh, even more specifically, and that is completely out of the blue, but I, I, I hope uh, Aurora will forgive me for that. I uh, would like to extend uh, an invitation to the to the observatory, why not, if, if that can be convenient, to have a previous, when once you organize your uh, next uh, conference, the next year, a year from now, would like you to consider the Jean Monnet House also as a place to uh, to gather the members of your governing bodies or experts, etc., ahead of the meeting. So I think it might be it might work actually quite nicely. We're not that far apart, two hours apart, so that before the big big conference, the the bodies of your observatory can also uh, you know use the Jean Monnet House and the new facilities for for a previous meeting surrounded by nature and good spirit, et cetera. And of course, I am also opening that possibility to, to all of you, uh, dear colleagues and friends, uh, following the, this conference uh, online. Uh, so please, as I said at the beginning, just let us know how we can support. And now I'm talking about the Jean Monnet House, but of course, I think I it is already the case with Rome that they, they are present in 53 different countries. So they do that, that work already. So I think, I think I speak on behalf of all of us just to say that we are uh, at your disposal to accompany your own initiatives and to make this network grow. So thank you very much. And again, this is more than a conclusion. Like, please let's use the remaining six, seven minutes to jump in and just, you know, make it uh, particularly lively as, a, as the end of, of this discussion. Thank you, thank you Martin. Thank you for uh, your hopes and encouragement. Of, of course, I am Jamie Marti, and, and maybe, yeah, of course, uh, this, I mean, we have to congratulate uh, ourselves also to have this capacity of networking, not only with partners, individuals, but also, also networking with networking. So. And I'm happy also, also to meet here uh, this new observatory and teaching history of the Council. And uh, but besides this annual conference that taking stock and our annual conference each other's, this idea of course to to set something more specific to 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 these uh, students or young people, like we did with our traveling seminars. But this 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 idea is, is quite important around Spinelli also ideas and this kind of a, we talk about you know summer or autumn school something like that. So we have to work on it, and then then we have uh, this partnership also for four years with the European Commission and the program serve, and with all of you and experts. So we have to work on this this line, and then and then improve this. Uh, I mean, uh, technical and practical schedule to 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 develop this kind of uh, program for for young students and people. So. Uh, I, I extremely support this idea, Marti, as you may know, as you know, of course. Uh, and we open this floor to, to the others. Uh, and by the way, I'm saying uh, every, uh, many, many things, of, of course, I provide to say, uh, to conclude uh, with this also to, to your colleagues, to the speakers, to Marcos, of course, with uh, enlightening with these clear ideas that we are working for a long time already, you know, with this teleology of memories <laughs> that I quote so many times myself. So it's from Marcus, of course, his first text that he did. So uh, anyway, thank you for all the rest and the team. And uh, and of course, there, I, I think that there was someone else who wanted to, to take the floor and to say something. It was hello. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. Peter de Burgraf, author 100 director from Amsterdam. I okay. thank you for the illuminating lectures. I've got uh, one question. Well, has the Observatory of History Teaching got any leeway to? 
to um, to have players in the fields participating? That's the question, actually. Um, I, I'm not sure if I understood the question. Are you asking if the observatory has some field actors also? If if we are represented at different levels and not only uh, at intergovernmental level, being based in the Council of Europe? Well, Is it the question? You. Well, what I mean with players in the field, um, has it been established as a closed body and um, will it just go on in its 12th or apparently 13th month after the foundation? Or would you really be looking for cooperative partners just to... Yes, yeah, yes, sure. We, we really need that. It's not only that we want, but in order to really cover the um, um, the scope of the of the work of the observatory we need to have a partner at different level and and as i mentioned in the presentation we are an intergovernmental body based in the council of europe and uh, our mandate of course has its limit uh, only through partnerships we can be present let's say in the field and, and i can mention a direct partnership for instance with euroclio when it comes to um, the outreach in terms of uh, teaching uh, body, uh, uh, professors, teachers, etc., cetera. Um, there are other networks that are already part of our um, uh, very newly established, let's say, uh, cooperation hub. But the idea is from now on to focus on this and to see exactly to which extent each of these future partners or people that are interested in the work of the observatory can have an active role to play because um, last week in the annual conference, um, we tried to mention really what worries us is not to establish a network because that's not the most difficult thing to just meet once per year. And, and I think you said it yourself, just to have a state of, uh, of the art, of the art in, in, in this field of uh, who is doing what in the field of history education, but, but to really have like a planning, a clear uh, strate strategic, let's say, uh, approach to how we work together, at which level and for which purpose. And, and, and we would like to have this, especially because in the field of history education, we have academia, we have the teachers, we have the non-formal education and including the remembrance places or the museums or all those that that bring their part uh, of work uh, in the picture, the students themselves, but also the networks on uh, history didactics. Uh, so we already identify so many actors and many of them do an amazing work already. I didn't mention Georgia Kart Institute, for instance, they work with us and they do uh, um, uh, 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 an amazing work on the, the analysis of the curriculum textbooks. They are very well known for this. So the idea is really to now um, uh, sit and we started already after the annual conference and see how this uh, cooperation hub will work in the future. So everybody finds its own role and that it's action oriented and not only uh, sharing of information. Well, I think it's one o'clock, Jordi. Yes. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, but I need to. to well, so it's one o'clock. So your last word, Martin. In the ending time. So thank you very much to all, and uh, see you uh, next year for the same event. But I hope, hopefully, even before that. And, sure. uh, uh, thanks for participating today and for being with us and for uh, sharing your thoughts. Thank you to all the presenters, especially also to the European Commission and to all the different partners. Sure. Have a, a nice weekend. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.